Hello everyone, Shutterock here with another update on Rockman X Dive and some developments in the Mega S game department as well. First things first, I do apologize that my voice sounds a bit scratchy in this episode. I've been fighting a nasty cold with a minor fever attached to it over the last week, so that also explains why there hasn't been many news videos last week either. Oh yes, you can tell when spring season is almost in the air because my body just shuts down whenever we're having this transitional period. But today I feel a little bit better so we can finally get caught up on things. Hopefully I'll have fully recovered by the time Mega Man Zero and ZX Legacy Collection comes out next week. Yep, our coverage is going to be starting on that really soon. Exciting times! Let's begin with Rockman X Dive. There hasn't been too many new updates come out of this game. Apparently I picked a great time to get my spring allergies out of the way. Lately the X Dive Facebook page has been posting things like character introduction videos for each of the characters starting with X and Zero, that's all they have right now at the time of recording this video. It just shows off their different skills that they got to each, which is nothing new if you played the coolest beta test or you've been following our coverage up to this point. But when they do get to the other characters that we haven't seen in action yet, like say Ferrum or Cinnamon, yeah, it's gonna get more interesting then. They also made this wholesome artwork of Rico for Valentine's Day. But cute artwork aside, the new stuff actually comes from updates to both the App Store and Google Play listings respectively. Let's talk about the Google Play update first, which adds this image, giving us our first look at the 3D model for First Armor X in that classic XX pose with the saber. It's funny to see First Armor X in that pose, but you know how X Dive is with their deep log errors. Overall though, the 3D model does look pretty sharp. Heck, all these models don't look too bad, now that they're shown in high quality like this. As for the App Store update, here's where things get weird. So remember when we talked about how the App Store listing originally gave Rockman X Dive a March 4th release date? That's not the case anymore, because on the App Store page, the release date has been changed to March 31st. Now, my first thought is this has to be a placeholder date, because that is literally the last day they could release this game while still meeting that quarter one launch window that they gave back in December. But why was this changed from March 4th? Well, it should be noted that the App Store listing was literally the only place we ever saw March 4th as a release date. The Rockman X Dive developers themselves, both on the Facebook, Twitter, or any other official pages, have not confirmed a release date themselves yet. We were literally just going off this App Store listing and just assuming, oh, I guess it's March 4th. Suffice to say, this is really, really weird right now, and at the core of the problem is the fact that the x Dive developers are not communicating with us when this game is actually coming out. Is it March 4th? Is it actually the 31st? Or is it somewhere in between? It's honestly hard to say anymore until we have official confirmation. But at the same time, they're doing this pre-registration event. They're letting people actually pre-download the game over in the Asian territories. They have the data on their phone ready to go and play when it comes out. So why are they not telling us when the game is coming out? Does that sound weird to you guys? Now I'm not super familiar with how mobile game launches go, but this would definitely be really weird if this was a console game. That lack of communication would simply not fly. As for the March 4th listing we saw in the first place, What's going on there? Because literally only Apple had it listed. Did Apple make a whoopsie? Revealing the date too early before the developers got to do it? Was the 4th the wrong date? So they had to change it to a placeholder one? It's really hard to say, guys. At the very least, Rockman Corner did report not too long ago that the first in-game event was supposed to happen on March 14th. That's assuming the game hasn't been delayed again because we've already had what seems to be two delays at this point. There was the delay from 2019 to 2020, but the second one seemingly happened under the radar, according to Redpoint21XX. 
Remember how I was talking about how people could have access to the servers of the games to data mine stuff, like these Valentine's costumes that are apparently on there, hinting at a Valentine's Day event? Well, he tells us in this tweet that if it wasn't for this delay that happened under the radar, we would be having a Valentine's Day event about now. He goes on to say, fear not though, because the event is going to be recycled into something else. Perhaps for the upcoming event in March? Or maybe for a summertime event featuring the rock babes and the bathing suits and everything? Beach body vial and all that? Who knows, but interesting. As for the release date of the game itself, outside of Asia, a user by the name of Orkstagram on Twitter asked Protodude directly, Do you still believe March 4th is a worldwide release? Shadowrock seems to think otherwise. And this was following my own video where we talked about how it's looking like that initial March 4th release date was going to be for Asian territories only. They even removed Australia and India off the original list of countries it's going to come out in. Purdue says, Not worldwide, but it will be the launch date for a handful of countries, like the Asian ones we specified before. The release will be a year-long process. Which makes sense when you consider that yes, English is available as a language option, but have you seen this game? It's just riddled of English. That and it's still keeping that Rockman name, not Mega Man. So from what it sounds like, when they start to take this game over to Japan or the West, they're gonna hit up Capcom Japan and maybe Capcom USA to go ahead and localize these games properly for their regions. I put a big question mark after Capcom USA though, because from what I've seen behind the scenes, the USA branch doesn't seem to care about x Dive too much right now. I don't think it's really on their radar as far as their business at the moment, because they have been pretty much ignoring it. But that can always change later. So if we go off of Proto Dude's theory that it's going to be a year long process, we probably will see a proper Mega Man x Dive later in the year. That said, servers allowing, you will still be able to play this game if you really want to using apps such as QApp, Tap, or heck, just downloading the APK. Those are the ways that you can go ahead and play games from other regions. So that's the gist of what's going on right now. Is X-Dive going to come out on March 4th still, or are we going to be having a delay here, or is something else happening with this release? I mean, it does feel like this game is coming out really, really soon though, considering that they're doing pre-registration right now. You can actually download the game if you have access to that listing, so I can't imagine it being too long before this game is playable. It's just up to developers right now what they want to do and when the heck they're going to announce the actual date. We'll keep you guys posted on the goings on as they come. And hey, speaking of updates, I am going to follow up on one thing we talked about in the spoiler section of the last video. So if you don't want to hear about a potential new character coming to the game that hasn't been announced yet, we recommend you go to the timestamp listed right here to skip on to the next section of the video. Okay, here we go in 3, 2, 1. Welcome back to the spoiler section. This time I'm revisiting these two icons that we couldn't identify last time. Featuring a weird charge shot looking thing and what we thought was missile barrages. In the last video I asked you guys for thoughts on what you think this could be and who it is for. And a few of you have come up with an interesting answer I want to share. Some of you guys have pointed out that the barrel featured in the left skill icon looks very similar to Ultimate Armor X from Command Mission. Yeah, Command Mission Ultimate Armor X. That humongous armor with so much weaponry attached to it that X literally has to hover to get around. That armor is so bulky. So it's hard to imagine how something like that would work in X-Dive. That, and the fact that I didn't find any missile weaponry while researching Ultimate Armor X is the reason why I pretty much disregarded the idea when I was doing my own research before making the prior video. But I was thinking about it like you guys. Well, after taking a closer look, could it be? That barrel in the first skill icon does match up with the giant guns that X has in his Ultimate Armor form in Command Mission, and about the missiles, while Ultimate Armor X from Command Mission himself doesn't use any missiles, 
that doesn't really matter anymore because now that I look at it even closer, those aren't even missiles, those are bullets. And as part of his action trigger and command mission, Ultimate Armor X did use some heavy bullet rounds in a big barrage, kind of like this picture. Of course, we won't know whether you guys were right about this until later, but I wanted to share this because, yeah, maybe you guys are onto something. We would have never imagined that Ultimate Armor X from Command Mission could be an X dive just because of that bulky armor, but if he does make it into the game, man, they really aren't holding back on any of these characters. Seems like anything really goes. That is it for our X dive news for today, but now we're going to change gear over to some Mega S games. Starting with a brand new announcement. Do you remember that cool little roguelite Mega Man like game that you could play with a friend in co op called 20XX? Well, the people over at Battery Staple Games is back at it again with their sequel to this game called 30XX. Yep, we jumped a thousand years into the future for this one. And both of the playable characters, Nina and Ace, have joined us for the trip. This time in the year 30XX, the game is presented in a high definition pixel art style, which is definitely a change from the original art style from 20XX. The original art style was pretty divisive among people, you either loved it or you hated it. Personally I didn't really mind it, but the new art style in 30XX definitely looks amazing. It's sort of like if they took Mega Man Zero and ZX and put it into the Octopath Traveler art style. Maybe not that HD, but the pixel art here on display is pretty cool. Now in case you're new to the whole 20XX franchise, wow I can't believe I'm saying that, it's an actual franchise now. Anyway, the original game was a roguelite where you picked either Nina or Ace to go through, and after that you had the fortress stages obviously. But every time you play the game, the levels are different because the game procedurally generates all the terrain, the enemies, the obstacles, traps, and all that jazz. Meaning every time you play, things are fresh. You can't rely on memorizing everything like you did before, except for the bosses, which are pretty much the same every time you play. You can also collect nuts, which serve as your currency, which you could trade in for power-ups new weapons and armor, and other neat little things, or even crazy things that just can alter how you play the game for better or worse. And of course, in true Mega Man fashion, when you defeat a boss, you get their weapon. Though you can also opt to drop the weapon in exchange for a different power-up. That's pretty much the basics though, so how does 30XX shake things up? Well, according to their press release, in addition to a brand new set of 8 levels and bosses, there's been some changes under the hood too. The press release says that beyond the aesthetic overhaul, 20XX heroes Nina and Ace return from myriad of new abilities. No longer merely wielding different primary weapons, in 30XX the powerful pair possesses entirely distinct movesets allowing greater freedom of expression for both exploring levels and beating back the machines holding Earth prisoner. Nina's new power fusion system allows her to meld together abilities earned from vanquishing bosses and tailor them to the situation at hand with 64 separate attacks. I forget if this was confirmed, but there was talk on their Twitter page that the power fusion system may allow you to actually mix and match special weapons, sort of like Kirby 64, where you could combine different powers to make new ones, some of them being really powerful. And if they are to take that concept into Mega Man, oh boy, this game is gonna be really fun. It would also be a good way to reduce the amount of weapon slots that your special weapons take up since you could combine them. I really hope they are doing that. The press release goes on and says, Meanwhile, the Blade Brandishing Ace boasts a versatile set of techniques, which can be chained together with standard attacks to unleash fierce combos, adapt to any situation, and reach new heights. So basically, Ace is even more like Zero now. Also with this game, they're introducing a new currency called Memoria which are collected during runs, Memoria can augment the experience, boosting character abilities, giving keen insight into the challenges to come, or altering how stages generate other helping hands. Lastly, there's another thing called Entropy Conditions, which is going to bring in more layers of additional difficulty options you can play with in exchange for Memoria and other rewards. 
Now, in case you weren't aware from me rambling about it for the last few minutes, I really did enjoy 20XX back when it came out, and the game only got better as it was developed. I even reviewed the Nintendo Switch version of the game when it came out. If you are so inclined to check it out, I'll have a link to that in the description below. I think it's a fun little game, especially when playing it with a friend via co-op, while bringing in that really cool idea of combining Mega Man with roguelike experiences. And it looks like so far 30XS is shaping up to be a worthy evolution of that formula. I was really stoked to see that they are continuing with this series, because I did find it to be a lot of fun. If you wanted to check out 30XX for yourself, we will have a link to the trailer in the description below. That's has some really catchy music by the way. But if you want to play the game yourself, it will be at PAX East 2020 from February 27th to March 1st. Hey, the 27th is when Zero and ZX Legacy Collection comes out in Japan. As for the actual release, 30XX will be coming out on Steam and other consoles sometime in 2021. If you want to wishlist the game ahead of time on Steam, you can do so with the link in the description below. Our last update for today takes us to a game we haven't talked about in probably years. It's Android Hunter A from Digiplox, which if you just look at the name, you can probably tell what game this is inspired by. Yep, it's a 2.5D Mega Man X-like platformer, which is going for a more realistic look in terms of its graphics. Recently, Digiplox themselves have shared with us some new trailers. That shows off some of the stages they are planning, some bonuses like costumes, and in the latest trailer they shared with us directly, they're showing off the bosses that are going to be in the game. Gotta say, that first one gives you some Crash Bandicoot vibes for sure, with that tribal guy who was a boss in the first game. If you're interested in checking out more of Android Hunter Day for yourself, I will have a link in the description below with their YouTube page, Twitter page, and the official website for more information. That's it for today's Mega News Roundup. Thank you so much for watching, and for more on Mega Man, and hey, some Mega S games too, stay tuned to Shadrock ZX. We're gearing up for Mega Man Zero and ZX Legacy Collection coming out next week, folks. Yep, things are about to get pretty hype and not to mention busy around here. So, we hope that you will stick around for our coverage. Until then, rock on, and have a great day.